I read somewhere that as of 12C, Oracle no longer supports raw devices for database storage. Do we have to move to ASM? And the answer to that is maybe. Let me clarify. If you go to, or first I should say, yes, you are correct. In the documentation, in fact, there's the link there. It actually says, D support of raw storage devices. I want to stress here, we, distinct, we differentiate very carefully between deprecated and D support. Deprecated means we're not putting any more work into this. We advise you to move away from it. At one day in the future, we will simply stop having it all together. D supported is a little bit more severe. D supported is simply saying, if you use this, you are on your own, and there's a very good chance it won't work altogether. For example, we de supported streams in a recent version of Oracle. It's simply not there anymore. That's what we mean by de supported. Obviously, we can't stop you from using raw devices, but they are totally de supported in Oracle 12. There's a very good chance that one day you'll try to create a data file that points to a raw device and it'll simply say invalid file name, invalid data file, etc. You can't use them in 12, even if they're working for you. So I can't stress that enough. And don't get me wrong, ASM is very cool. ASM is a really cool piece of technology. It's been around forever. It came out actually in 8.1. So it's nearly, ooh, what's that, a decade, 20 years old. 20 years old, nearly, ASM. So it's robust, it's time proven, and obviously is uh, the underlying disk management technology that sits on top of AS, um, on top of our Exadata machines. So ASM is super cool, but I fully concede that if you're a DBA that has always had a file-based uh, system or even a raw-based system, and you're used to working at the storage level or system administrator level with managing your files and your storage, then ASM might be a little bit of a jump in terms of a learning curve. I'd recommend you go ahead and do it. It's very easy to have ASM just even on a, on a play database, but I understand if you're in the middle of getting ready to upgrade and you're going, I've never touched ASM, I'm in a bit of a panic. So that's my but there in that statement, the fact that it is quite possible that ASM, you might find a bit daunting, at least to start with. But one of the cool things, if you read that D support argument nice and carefully, you see you can have a supported shared file system. And I thought I'd do a little trip down memory lane for you here. I used to work in a company where we had a mainframe system, and this is back in the ooh, early 90s. Uh, it was a mining company in Perth. And we had mainframes. I was actually a COBOL programmer back in the day. And we decided to move to Oracle. And in those days in Australia, if you were buying an Oracle system, you would buy a little Sun server that I think is an Enterprise 450. They were like the machine of choice. And you ran Oracle on that. And generally people were very successful with that. And so you'd go buy another one and then you'd go buy another one. And very soon you've got lots of these really cool little sunboxes all running Oracle databases. And then, oh, this is a sad, sad moment. Something terrible happened. What is the terrible thing that happened? No, a shark didn't come along. Something worse. A SAN came along, a storage area network. And like back in the day, you know, they're good now, but back in the day, that was just a nightmare. And so the motivation for them was fairly simple. Local disk causes problems, according to the people that had to look after disk on your systems. You know, they were hard to manage because they were scattered across lots and lots of servers and they were inefficient. And, you know, there was perhaps some argument, some, some truth in that, because lots of different servers, each having their own disk, meant that as each one got to 50% or 70% full, you simply couldn't use free space from another server because it was in a different physical cabinet. That was a bit of a problem. And hence, the claim solution to all of this was to consolidate and law, put all that information out of the servers themselves onto a storage area network. And when these things came along, they were revered as you know, the greatest thing since sliced bread. You got to consolidate all your storage. You got supposedly much better performance and much, much ease of management. And funnily enough, the storage administrator suddenly became the single most powerful person in the organization generally, because you had to go to them cap in hand to actually get some storage allocation for your database. And a lot of people actually failed huge with storage area networks because the early storage area networks were crammed full of disks and had a little tiny CPU in the control that managed them. And so you could never get the performance out of them that you would get in local disks. And there's sort of an irony nowadays in the fact that you look at the big data revolution, and that's all about 
not consolidating storage. It's more about moving storage back to where the code is or moving code to the storage. And so you see nowadays with big data, a lot of systems have local disk. You just have lots and lots of little systems. But I digress. The biggest issue with storage area networks, of course, was the network part. We had these little thin networks between the disk and the servers, which absolutely hobbled performance. But the reality is times have changed. InfiniBand came along, which gave you incredibly low latency. You look at things like Fiber Channel now, you can now do 128 gigabit Fiber Channel. So storage area networks, I used to be scathingly critical of them, but they actually have improved um, dramatically over time. The only drama is, as they've got better, they've got insanely expensive as well. In fact, that's one of the reasons that you look at something like the uh, Exadata boxes, we still put that disk inside the cabinet. Uh, we don't reach out to storage area networks. So what's a cheaper, simpler solution? That's a little bit of the, of the, sort of the, the backdrop of memory, and that is Ethernet, NFS. You know, a classic example is in my home here. I have a server just behind this monitor, and it's simply got a whole stack of disks plugged into it, and it serves as my local file server for the myriad of laptops I have in this household, uh, much to the chagrin of my partner. It's one of those things that we often do, the ability to actually have cheap storage available over a very cheap network. It is, you know, and that's cool for database. If you could run an Ethernet simple NFS uh, network for your database, that's super cool because A, it's dirt cheap. You simply buy the storage, plug in an Ethernet cable, and you're good to go. It's a shared file system. It satisfies that need in terms of if you can't use raw devices, you can use a shared file system. And that's really good because if you're a DBA and you've never used ASM, there's that nice familiarity. I can log on to any node, for example, in a rack cluster, and I can see file systems just like they used to look on a single instance machine. We're using rack, things like when you get to transportable table spaces, using parallelism, the ability for all nodes to simply and trivially access files as if they were local to the machine is really cool and avoids any ASM complexities if you're unfamiliar with it and avoids obviously raw devices which are now out the door. So why isn't everyone using NFS, Ethernet, simple uh, NAS-based storage for their Oracle databases? Well, everyone says it's slow, you know, and that is actually partially true because if you're using NFS for an Oracle database, just out of the box, NFS was never designed really for databases. It was designed for file sharing, network file sharing, NFS. So Oracle needs to talk to the OS. OS then maintains what's called an NFS cache, like a file cache on your Windows PC, and that eventually makes its way down to the database. Lots of layers, lots of overheads. Wouldn't it be cool if Oracle could talk to a NAS system without all those overheads? And it actually does exist. It's a thing called Direct NFS. It's actually been around since Oracle 11G, and I've actually worked with several customers implementing Direct NFS, and it rocks. Here's a graph from a NetApp, which is actually a benchmark done at 200,000 IOPS. That's a lot of IOPS. That is really smoking. And with traditional storage, normal disks, you'd be looking at eight milliseconds. That's the figure on the right. As you work your way down, you can see using direct NFS, which bypasses a lot of that operating system overhead, you can get, what's that? That's half a millisecond. So we're down into microsecond territory at 200 thousand IOPS. That is insane. Direct NFS really rocks. And because the storage is now being controlled or storage access is now being controlled from directly inside the Oracle kernel, you get some nice little things like the ability to do sparse cloning of databases. You can check that Metalink note or sorry, that Moz note there to see details about CloneDB. That's a great facility for taking copies or sparse copies of production databases. So my recommendation would be if you're familiar with ASM, then it's the obvious move to, moving to point if you're on RAW at the moment. You go to ASM because you're familiar with it. If you're not familiar with ASM, have a good long look at direct NFS, even if you're not really familiar with it. If you've got the appropriate NAS technology that actually backs it up, you might find direct NFS is a really easy to use and wonderful piece of technology that I think is vastly underused um, in the Oracle landscape. <laughs> Thank you.